I don't know. I'd say I'm reasonable. Okay, that's completely unreasonable. I'm, I'm, I'm reasonable. You, you have no idea just how reasonable I have been. Reasonable synonyms are sensible, rational, practical, fair, appropriate. Fit, fitting, suitable, logical. All things I would definitely say describe me. Do they describe you? Welcome to I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. I'm reasonable. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. First of all, first of all, get excited. Get excited because we're back to the regularly scheduled program, right? You see those pictures behind me? Zainab on stage. Zainab on stage. Zainab on stage. Zainab on stage. Excuse me. <laughs> Drinking kombucha. We're back in the office. We're back in the United States of America. She's back in her office. Hey, everybody, on a scale from DDG to Halle Bailey, how reasonable have you been? We could go a couple of ways with that. On a scale from Joe Buttons to DDG, how reasonable have you guys? <laughs> on a scale from male to female, how reasonable have you been? On a scale from young to old, how reasonable have you been? On a scale from old to young, how reasonable have you been? Um, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson. I am Zainab Johnson and I'm so happy that we're back chatting. Okay, um, first of all, first of all, before I get started, hot damn ho, here we go again. Helene just hit the Southeast and now Milton is trying to make his way. I am so sorry. I am so sorry if you are listening and you've been affected or you know someone has been affected. I'm so sorry. And I and I I pray that it gets better for you. I pray that um, I pray that you get the relief and the help that you need. Um, if you're in a place where they're like evacuate, 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 evacuate. I've never I don't believe I've ever been in a hurricane. One time I was on vacation recently, like a few years back, I was on, this is after the, this is definitely post pandemic. I was, went to, on vacation with my sister and her husband and their kids. You know, whenever, whenever your sister, whenever your sister and her spouse or your sibling and their spouse be inviting you on vacation with, with their kids, just know they not really trying to be around you. They just need a babysitter that they trust. And like, you might think like, oh, that's so nice. Y'all treating me to a vacation. And like, I love hanging out with my nieces and nephews and et cetera. But just know, just know your entire role is the role of a babysitter. Yeah, you are their auntie or their uncle, but your entire role or their godparent or whoever, but your entire role is to be a babysitter so that they can enjoy their vacation. And it is, my sister's gonna listen to this and laugh. And it's probably cheaper for them to pay your entire way than to pay for a babysitter. Because a babysitter, you got to pay the entire way and pay for the services. But for you, you know what I'm saying, for the relative, for the person that is madly in love with their kids already, they get the service for free. And you be babysitting all night. You know what I'm saying? Babysitters, you be having to give the day. You be having to give a night off. Like, they still got hours within that babysitting trip. But when you the auntie, it's all day and all night. And what you going to say? What you going to say? That ain't my nephew. Of course, that's my nephew. He can hang out with me whenever he wants. He could be here 24-7. So, anywho. <laughs> so, we went to like maybe the Florida Keys or something like that. We went to a part of Florida that I had never been to before and haven't been back since, although it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. It's that south. It's that, it's that, that western part of Florida where it's just a, you know what I'm saying? It's one way in, one way out. But it's beautiful. While we were there, I believe it was a baby hurricane. And let me just tell you what, it was scary. It was scary. There was flooding. There were power outages. Um, all the businesses had closed. You know, resorts and timeshares and things like that, they, they try, the, the people, the employees, they still try to, like, offer good service. But also, there's a part of you that's like, well, if you're working here, don't you have family 
I know you're not making in that drive every, you know what I'm saying? So it was rather scary. We were renting a Range Rover on that trip, I believe. And me and my nephew, after like, after a day after it had settled, but there was still so much flooding, we went to like go find like a, a Starbucks that was open. It was like only one Starbucks. So we went to go see if it was open. And the, um, the water was like up to the tires, like, like high on the tires and we were in a Range Rover. Um, I, I say all of that to say that was very scary. I stayed calm, but we were, we were on a resort that was right off the water. So like, I mean, you could just look out the window of my room and I'm just looking, I'm just looking into a big body of water. You get what I'm saying? I'm just looking into the Atlantic. I believe that was the Atlantic. Um, is there a bay or something in Florida that I don't know about? But whatever it is, it, 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 it go out to the Atlantic. And I was just thinking, like when the waves was coming up, I just knew it was going to knock us out the room. And at the time, my nephew, my nephews were like maybe 13 and, and one or something. And I was so, I just kept thinking, all right, I'm going to like, like how, how do I rescue them? Like, I was so scared. So I can only imagine. I can only imagine um, if you are in the southeast and especially Florida right now, um, it's pretty devastating. And it, and, it, and it seems to be getting worse. Um, and so my heart goes out to you. And I, I am hoping that it, that, that it gets better and, you know, that there is not too much devastation. Um, yeah. It's like a natural disaster, too. You ain't got nobody to be mad at, right? It's like when there's wars and stuff in the world, you could pick a side. You could be like, well, this person shouldn't have done this. This person, this this government shouldn't have done this. This, this, this. But when it's a natural disaster, you really can't do nothing. You can't really be mad at nobody. What, you going to be out in the just looking up at the sky? Um. So, yeah, as I said, I'm so sorry, and I hope that you are getting the relief that you need. Um. Look at me. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw I posted the other day. I had to do a chop. Had to do a big chop. Um, I don't know if it was a big chop, but I definitely had to chop off some dead hair. Um, you know when people be like, it's a big chop, like they chopped off 12 inches of hair. I did not. Um, but it was definitely, I would have my I would have liked to keep the, have kept the hair that I had, but I just can't take no strikes, uh, 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 thin ends. I just can't take it. I can't take it. And so, uh, my hairstylist, Crystal, who might be listening, who's wonderful. If you are in Vancouver, if you anywhere and you want a hairstylist, but she's in Vancouver, it, you, like hire her. Cause she's great. Um, when we were done with the season, I was like, girl, I think I'm gonna just cut it off. And so when we were done on the last day, she was like, you sure? And she washed it and, and blew it out and and blew it out really straight. She didn't flat iron it, but she blew it out really straight and was like, okay, so you want, do you want me to just cut it like, and so did it, you know, just get a lot of it off or you want all of it off? I said, girl, get every last strand off, please. So now I'm out here looking like a baby. A cute baby, but a baby nonetheless. And let me just tell y'all what. Let me just tell y'all what. I was like, I hope I look as young as I think I look because ain't nothing like a baby hairstyle with a grown face. Ain't nothing like that, okay? When you got a baby hairstyle, but a but a <laughs> but a old lady face. It, um, but I I don't think I'm really interested in um like the maintenance of like a small afro right now. So I'm probably going to start, I'm probably going to do like protective styles and wig it up and braid it up and all of that stuff. But anyway, especially when I get on stage, like I'll be like in the, dr the drama, you know what I'm saying? The drama of, you know what I'm saying? You know, Beyonce be, there's no reason for me to whip my hair when I'm telling a joke, but I do sometimes be like moving it. I do sometimes be, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, okay, what are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? Okay, this week we're going to talk about DDG. We're going to talk about DDG, Halle Bailey, and, 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 and Joe Button. And here's the thing. I don't even really want to talk about this. And you might be asking yourself, well, Zainab, why are you talking about this? Does somebody produce your podcast and you don't have a say? Don't you do this all on your own and you can talk about what you want? Yeah. 
And so when I say I don't want to talk about it, I don't mean like, oh my God, I'm really doing something I don't want to do. I, I, I think like when it comes to celebrities, dating other celebrities and or dating civilians that then become celebrities by uh, way of proximity, um, I don't know. I don't really be caring. I don't really care. Like in the same way that like I don't really care whoever my neighbor is seeing. Like I really don't care. I'm going to be polite when I when they walk in and out their house. Hey, hey, oh, nice to meet you. How you doing? Oh, take it. But I don't really care. As long as it ain't no nothing wild happening. As long as ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying, beating nobody, stomping nobody out, shooting nobody. You know what I'm saying? As long as you ain't a threat to public safety or private safety. I, I, I just, I don't know. I don't really be caring. But everybody cares. Everybody cares about Halle Bailey dating DDG, having a baby by him, and ultimately them breaking up, which is what happened. So I'm going to talk about it. Um... And then on that, that's the only thing I'm going to talk about today. Um, and on our Ask Z, our Ask Z involves an elderly person and road rage. Thank you so much for submitting Ask Z's. If you do want to submit an Ask Z, make sure that you, you know what, it's probably better because I like to keep them anonymous. It's it, If you want to submit an Ask Z, then go ahead and just email me at uh, Zainab Comedy VIP at Gmail. So Zainab, Z A I N A B, Comedy, C O M E D Y, V I P at Gmail.com. And of course, that link is in the details of this podcast as well. Submit your Ask Z's and maybe I'll answer them live on the podcast. Not live on a podcast, but I guess live on a podcast. Um, let me cover this up because they're not paying me. Kombucha. I see my water bottle is trying to make an appearance, but they're not paying me either. So, all right, before we get into the topic, um, let's go over where I'm performing, right? Um, Some days I'd be like, I ain't about to say the shows no more. I ain't about to say the cities. And every time I think that, every time I think to not do it on a post, people be like, thank you so much. And people be like, oh my God, you coming here? It'd be like they first time hearing it or seeing it. So I'm going to continue to do it because I really want you guys to be at my shows. I really love giving you guys the podcast every week, but I also want to like see and meet you guys and perform for you guys in person. Okay, so um, coming up in Philadelphia, October 18th and 19th, I will be there at the Philadelphia Punchline, four shows, two nights, October 18th and 19th. October 25th and 26th, I will be in Detroit, Michigan. It will be my very first time performing in Detroit. Um, I imagine that a good amount of my family will be there, extended family, because a lot of them live in Michigan. Um, So that's October 25th and 26th. Detroit, Michigan, November 1st and 2nd. I will be in Denver, Colorado at Comedy Works in Denver, November 1st and November 2nd. If you're looking for those tickets, the link is in the details to this podcast. But the um, sponsor of that particular show is Rocket Mortgage. So if you click on the link and it says like Rocket Mortgage Comedy or something like that, that's the reason. Okay. Um, November 8th and 9th, I will be in St. Paul, Minneapolis. November 11th, Amsterdam. November 14th, Geneva. November 15th and 16th, Paris. November 18th through the 23rd, London. November 29th through December 1st, Ontario, California. It's so funny. My friend Yamanika, who is a very funny comedian, check her out. Her name is Yamanika Saunders, if you are unaware of her. Uh, Super different, very different, extremely different, but wonderful. Um, Unhinged, but wonderful. Uh, She hit me. Sunday and was like, um, Hey, I'm in Ontario. Now I'm thinking Ontario, California, right? Because I'm an American and I live in the United States and I live in California and Ontario. So if anybody usually says Ontario, they talk about Ontario, California, right? In my world. Um, and I know we've discussed this. I've, I know in the comments we've discussed this, uh, that it's confusing, whatever. Um, but to who, as I said, <laughs> So, um, so she's like, Hey, um, I'm heading to Ontario. That's the text early in the morning on Sunday. She says, Hey, I'm in Ontario. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I was like, um, 
well, if you have, to, she was like, I'm filming. I was like, oh, nice. I was, I was like, um, if you have time, like, you know, um, come see me. I was like, it's like, I, I know I'm like an hour out of, you know, I'm like an hour away from Ontario. And so she was like, okay, I'm really going to try and figure it out. And so throughout the day, she's kind of texting me. And I'm like, girl, no pressure. You know, I just got back from Canada. Like, I'm just laying on the couch all day. Like, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't I ain't do nothing. Like, I had Grubhub and Whole Foods deliver me stuff. Like, I ain't doing nothing. Like, I'm here. If you decide to come, you are welcome, but no pressure, right? And so as the day goes on, she's like, okay. Like, towards the evening, she was like, um, she was like, okay, so um, I'm like four hours outside of Ontario. And I'm a little bit confused. I'm like, she four hours outside of Ontario. Where could she possibly be coming from, right? As we kept communicating, so I don't know what alerted her, but I said, but she said, girl, I'm so sorry. I meant Ontario, Canada. And I said, oh, so I bust out laughing. But then it hit me, oh, she thinks I'm in Vancouver. And then she thinks that she could just hop, skip, and jump from Ontario to Vancouver. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I mean, I'm sure y'all know this, but I had to say to her, I said, that is so funny. But also, Vancouver is to Ontario. Wherever you are in Ontario, Canada, it is like L.A. to New York. So what you wasn't about to do was get on a get in a car and be an hour away from me. OK, like I was laughing so hard. Anyway, November 29th through December 1st, I will be in Ontario, California. December 4th, I will be in Austin, Texas. December 6th through the 8th, Houston, Texas. December 31st, New Year's Eve, San Jose, California. If you're in the Bay Area and you want something to do, I'm about to say if you got nothing to do. But it's like, no, you actually have time to make a choice. If you want to make the choice to come spend your New Year's Eve with me, then do it. I'll be at the San Jose Improv December 31st. January 3rd and 4th, I will be in Seattle, Washington. January 9th, Raleigh, North Carolina, one night only. January 16th through the 18th, Washington, D.C. And someone just actually left a comment and was like, girl, you're going to be here right after the inauguration. Or like that's the weekend of the inauguration. I am. I didn't even know that. I'm amped. I don't even know who's going to win. I know who I'm voting for, but I have no idea who will become the winner. But I will be in D.C. When whoever it is swears on that Bible or whatever or whatever's going to happen. Uh, ain't it crazy that it's a separation between church and state, but they still swear on the Bible? Ain't that crazy? I digress. Um, February 21st through the 23rd, I will be in Chicago, Illinois. <sighs> I just realized I'll be in Chicago February 21st through the 23rd. Huh? The coldest month of the winter. Oh, gosh. Huh. I'll be in Chicago. So come on, you guys. <laughs> Get those tickets. Fill up the room because that's the only way I won't have pneumonia. Um, and then April 11th. And 12th, I will be in Toronto. April 11th and 12th, I will be in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> um, there are more cities to be announced soon. More cities will be announced soon. But until then, uh, check out the link in the podcast, in the details of the podcast to get the tickets that are available um, um, in a city near you. Okay. While I have you, like, share, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Dang, I think I got to pee. I ain't going to stop. Um <laughs> Sounds like it sounds sounds like you're inviting a UTI. You got to pee, but you're not going to stop. Either this going to be a good quick podcast or you're in. So next week when you like you guys, I have a UTI. We not going to feel bad for you because you made a choice. What's up with Z? Yo, last week I shared the Atlanta story, right? <laughs> I posted that. I posted that episode close to midnight. Maybe when very late, very, very late. I was extremely late getting that one out. The next day I had to be to set. Let's say I posted the episode at 1130 at night or something like that. The next day I was on set. I was picked up at 6 a.m. I was brought to set. It was my last day of filming. It was a very long day. I arrived to set at 630 in the morning. I go into my trailer, uh, you know what I'm saying, get myself situated. As I'm heading into the hair and makeup trailer, I get an alert on my phone, I got a cash app. And I'm like, 
what? Who sent me a cash app? I'm expecting to see a name of someone that, yeah, maybe of my family members or something like that, right? I ain't, I ain't never really expecting cash apps. Or maybe I did a show, but I'm in Vancouver filming, so I haven't done no spots, right? So I'm like, so immediately when I don't really recognize the name, I got kind of sad because I was like, oh, no, somebody mistakenly sent me the wrong cash app. Like, I got somebody else's cash. And here's the thing. When it, I always think if somebody is sending a cash app, is like, Usually people need the money, right? And I don't say that like they're in a desperate state, but I'm saying ain't nobody sending like, yeah, if I do a show and the spot only pays $40, run me my $40, right? So I was like, dang, this is somebody else's money. I was about to screen shoot it and put it on my stories and probably share it on a podcast and be like, so if you know who this is, tell them I got their money, I need to get it to them, Right. Then something, right before I did that, something said, but just search, search your phone, like search your cash app, search, search your email, you know, whatever. I put the name in, I sent a cash app. It was from the girl who is the Atlanta story. Ah! Yo, when I tell you I was dying laughing, dying laughing, right? So she sent me the cash app. When I realized it was her, she sent me the cash app. And I was like, wait a second. I tried to think back to like what I said. Like, no, I know I expressed my gratitude of the gesture, although it didn't go how I thought it was going to go. So, but I was, and I wasn't like, uh, what you trying to, I never felt any way about it. I was just laughing so hard. Like I'd be, forget of course, of course, if somebody was willing to go pick up some gluten-free treats for me, of course, they probably listen to, of course, they probably subscribe to the things I do and listen, which is why when I was telling the story, I was like, so girl, if you listening, Hey girl. Right. So then I was like, okay, I gotta get, I gotta send her this money back. Um, but then shortly after that, I opened up my Instagram and I saw I had a message from, <laughs> and I had a message from her and she was like, girl, she was like, so why was I just doing my job, listening to the podcast, minding my business? <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, minding my business. And girl, you did not have to drag me like that. Yo, when I tell y'all I was dying laughing, she said, I ain't even going to hold you. She was like, I was dead wrong. She was like, I had so much going on and and I worked until like 6 a.m. And then I fell asleep. And when I woke up, I felt so bad. I just wanted to keep my work. All that I understand. Yo, I was laughing so hard. I sent her like a voice message back um, and sent her the money back because still, it that's just the right thing to do. I don't got to explain that to y'all. I don't got to go through that again. That's just the right thing to do. Like, because what trumps everything is still the willing, the, the initial like willingness. Right. Um, I, and I told her that I was going to give y'all an update on, I thought that was y'all when I, let me tell y'all that was the hardest laugh. Was it? I laughed a lot that day. Cause it was our last day of filming. Um, but it was a good laugh to start off the day when I realized that cash app was her. She was like, girl, I was dead wrong. Let me give you back this money. <laughs> but that's why I love y'all so much. That was the most reasonable exchange. And then, of course, I sent it back. We both reasonable. And I said, so I said, you know what the lesson from this is? We both more because she said to me in a message, she was like, you know, she said, um, she said, I'm not like, like I would have, like, I would have been totally fine if you told me like, no, nah, I don't want nothing. Or, you know, I wouldn't have felt like I wouldn't have felt like you would, you know, like, and I was like, that's where we both kind of messed up. Like we both didn't really, we both weren't like completely honest with each other. Cause if you had told me like, um, oh my God, I'm, um, I, I, I'm still up at 6 a.m. and da 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 da. Or I'm so sorry, Zainab. I woke up at you know whatever. It's like I wouldn't have even had you waste your time. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and then me instead of letting her buy treats that I know I don't want and ain't going to eat, I could have been like, um, you know, like thank you know like no, I mean I don't want any of those. Thank you, but I'm you know no thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like we just both weren't um uh completely honest in that and that that's like the lesson but very reasonable exchange which I really really love and it like made me realize like yeah the people for the most part like a good majority of y'all that subscribe to me like subscribe to all things Zainab y'all really are reasonable so 
yeah, you get what I'm like. Whatever. That's it. That's it. Um, I said I was back in my office, right? With my little fro. I ain't had a little fro in forever. <sighs> okay. DDG. I ain't, this is the most I ever said them letters in unison in my life. Um, but let me not disparage the young man because he did not like Joe Buttons disparaging him. And he said, let me, let me, you first pod, you, you podcast first episode. And he just got, re- anyway, whatever. We gonna watch it. We gonna talk about it. So if you don't know, cause I actually was talking to some, a younger man earlier today. And I said, um, I was like, oh, I'm getting ready to take my podcast. Blah, 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 and this is what I'm doing. And I'm going to discuss DDG. He was like, who is that? And that's a younger person. That's like a, a person in his twenties as well. He was like, who is that? And I was like, well, yeah, I guess I got to talk about it. Um, Halle Berry is um, a singer an actress first known for doing um, songs on the internet with her sister, Chloe Bailey. I said Barry, Halle Bailey. Um, Chloe and Chloe Bailey is her sister. And then they began writing songs for Beyonce. Um, they made, they performed with Beyonce. I think that that was kind of like what, you know, gave them a lot of like notoriety. And since then they've had these really, really wonderful um, blossoming careers. They have done solo projects. Um, uh, Chloe Bailey, she has acted in, in some really like nice, cool roles. Um, Halle Bailey really kind of skyrocketed because she was the first black Little Mermaid. Um, and that was a big deal. She got a lot of hate for that. Um, but, but because she got so much hate, you know, just because racism is um, embedded in this world, uh, it's in the fabric of human beings on this earth. Um, there was so much ra- racism. There was also a a huge rise to come to her defense. Um, and I think if you did not know about Halle Bailey before she was cast as um, Disney's A Little Mermaid, then everybody knew about her. I'm sure she was the number one Google search around that time. I'm sure she was number one on IMDb. Uh, at some point, it was revealed that she had a love interest. And her love interest, his name uh, is DDG. And DDG, I was unfamiliar with, but just because I'm unfamiliar with a person does not diminish who the person is or what they've done, right? But I, 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 the only reason why I know anything about him is um, because of his proximity to Halle Bailey. That, that's my truth. Um, but I don't think that means anything, you know, um, except what it is. It just means the fact, oh, it's, it's the same as when Beyonce came out with, let me upgrade you with Jay-Z. It's like, yeah, yeah, you are a phenomenal rapper. You've become a, 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 a very successful businessman, a music mogul, but, but, but what helped that, and it's undeniable is you partnered with one of the biggest, if not the biggest black pop star in the world since Michael Jackson. You know, I mean, come on. Um, That don't diminish any of Jay-Z's talents. Jay-Z at a point was one of my favorite, he was my favorite rapper at one point. Um, But it's just, it's it's, it's just about the, whatever. Y'all know what it is. Anywho. Um, apparently DDG was the biggest online personality, black online, black male online personality before Kai Sinat, um, who is a, who is like maybe one of the biggest YouTubers, TikToks, uh, Twitch streamers. Um, I don't know much about him either, but I do know, I do know that name because I have heard that name in the zeitgeist. DDG's name I had not heard in the zeitgeist until it was paired with Chloe, Chloe Bailey. It was revealed that they were a couple. Um, and he got a lot of hate. He got a lot of hate um, because I, and he talks about it. 
you know, her being basically like a bad, like a black American princess, you know, and therefore people and, and then people not either knowing him and or thinking he was unworthy, just kind of like dragging him through the mud. Like you don't deserve to be with her. She's great. She's talented. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's did. But here's the thing. Here's what we have to remember. She's all of those things and she chose him. So either he's okay or she don't make the decisions that you want her to. Do you get what I'm saying? Like he, he, he didn't knock her over the head and, and put her over his shoulder and steal her. It was a choice that she made. So that, that has to have, that has to give some sort of validity. I don't know the boy. I don't know the boy. I do, I'm not trying to, again, like trying to, dis, no, I'm not trying to disparage him. If I had to compare, I don't know none of his songs. Apparently he has songs. I don't know none of his songs. I never heard. I, I don't know nothing about him. I'm so sorry. If I just, if I just stay on a very shallow level and say like, who's, who's, who do I look at and just think is a very attractive person. And maybe I wouldn't even notice that person. Obviously Halle Bailey is like a be- a exceptionally beautiful woman young woman, you know, you know, like, but (laughs) again, Beyonce and Jay-Z, you you know, I don't really expect the men to be fine. No shade to the men out there. No shade. I don't really be expecting men to be fine, but I do be expecting men to bring a lot to the table, having nothing to do with their looks. So if you are a fine man and that's, (laughs) that's icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? Anywho. Um, so it was revealed that they were together and people didn't really like it. People weren't really excited about it. And then it was revealed that she was pregnant by him. As much as they tried to hide it for a very long time, then it was revealed that she was pregnant by him and people were outraged. People were outraged. I actually, speaking speaking of, I actually had a really fun conversation with Yamanika, my friend Yamanika, very funny comedian, as I said. And You know, Yamanika has really good takes on a lot of things. Um, And she was like, you know, like she was distraught. I hope she's okay with me sharing this. She was distraught. That boy going to mess up her life. I was on the complete opposite end of the argument. I said, what? How he going to mess up her life? Did he rape her? She was like, no. I said, did he force her? Did, was there some non-consent that I don't know about in this in this relationship? And she was like, no. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Remember how a couple of weeks ago I said to y'all, is you smart or is you dumb? I, I ain't going to sit and say somebody is smart, talented, knows there were all of these things, and then and then take full responsibility. I ain't going to give a person all the responsibility for the choices that I love that they made and then take all responsibility or accountability away from them in the choice that they made that I don't like. Right. Um, and I think that's what happened with their relationship. A lot of people, because they love her so much and because she is on a pedestal so high And she's very aspirational. And she's just more known. I mean, it's just that I can't. The reason why I can't tell you if the boy is aspirational or not is because I don't know him. I don't know nothing about him. So I can't even make a case for him because I don't know him. But she is known. There is no time ever where he was higher in a Google search than Halle Bailey. There's no time ever. They had the baby. He started posting videos of him with the baby and people was loving it. People was like, oh, wait, maybe maybe we were too hard on this young guy. He's so good with this baby. Maybe we were in and, and, and they look so happy and maybe we were. I'm going I'm to step back a little bit and give him a break. And then in the I don't know, last couple of days, it was announced that they had broken up, which happens. It happens to couples, young and old, black and white, from this earth or not, short and tall, gay or straight, or anything in between. It happens. 
married or just going together. It happens, right? People break up. Kids or no kids, people break up. It was announced that they broke up, I believe by him. Um, And then Joe Buttons on his podcast, let's just listen to it. Let's listen to what Joe Buttons said. Who the f- is DDG? <laughs> and, and why am I supposed to care about his thoughts on anything? Oh, I'm very God. happy that they have broken up, so I don't get to keep seeing this name attached to this girl's name when I don't know him for nothing as a standalone. And for me, it's important to know people based off their own name and merit and what they have done. Every I don't time even- I see his name, it's attached to hers, and it's typically in some type of clout chaser fashion. So that makes me look at him a different way. And hopefully I get to look at him a lot less now that they've broken. Well, she's extremely hard. So, you know, what's crazy. I don't disagree with most of what Joe Button said, although I recognize that it is unfair and illogical. Actually, here's the thing. One, it's a double standard, right? Uh, High profile men, uh, public facing men. Men that are really successful, really famous, really good at something, whatever, they can show up with a, so long as the woman is beautiful, that's the only time we're not going to drag them, right? So long as the woman is beautiful, uh, which is also crazy, um, they can show up with an unknown woman and by by proximity, that woman becomes famous and we're okay with it. We subscribe to her. We let her start her own business. Why do we listen to Savannah James's podcast? She's never dribbled a ball, but I'm okay with that. Because now I know exactly who Savannah James is by way of LeBron James. That happens with women all the time, and it's okay. But whenever there is a successful woman, whenever there is a successful high-profile woman, and then the guy she chooses is not someone that is that meets that same profile. It's like, hold up a second. We get very protective, especially, especially if it's a black woman. We get so if it's a young, black, beautiful woman with promise, we like, hold up. Who's this? Fill in the blank. Who is this? Cause, 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 and I, I get every aspect of it because black women, our, our public image is so disrespected so much that when there are black women who are high profile, public facing and seemingly like respectful and quote unquote high value and stuff, we be like, don't nobody fuck this up. Don't nobody fuck this up. It's the same as like, remember Boys in the Hood? It's like you had Ice Cube and then you had Morris Chestnut, right? And it's like whoever is the one that's going to get out the hood, whoever is the one that got the, the scholarship, whether it's academic or athletic, don't nobody fuck this up. We protecting this. We protecting our golden child. It's kind of like the same thing, which is a cultural thing that honestly, you guys, is a, it's a, it's a symptom of post-traumatic slave syndrome. It is a symptom of post-traumatic slave syndrome. Get the book. Anywho, back to Joe Buttons. I actually agree with some of what he said, which is a fact. I don't know this kid, DDG. I never heard of this kid. And the only time I ever heard of him and continue to hear about him, it is always in connection to Halle Bailey. That's just a fact. Now, I don't know if my internet and Joe Button's internet is different from DDG's internet, but that's that, that, it, 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 it's just a fact, right? That's not a diss, that, but that's a fact, right? But then Joe Buttons goes on to say, and I would rather know somebody from their merit. That's unfair. That's really unfair because it's like, well, I don't know. I could be married to a, a you know, NASA biologist and you how would you know his merit 
how would you know what he's done? How would you like, how would you know? And also sometimes, sometimes in relationships, sometimes there's not going to be two stars. And so should people not get together if both of them are not stars? Like I think about, um, I think about Denzel Washington and his wife, Pauletta Washington. And I think about an interview that I saw uh, when we were first kind of being introduced to John David Washington. And when he was on that um, show on Showtime with The Rock, it was like that football show or something. And I don't think many people made the connection that that's Denzel Washington's son. And then when people started making a connection, like, oh, that's Denzel Washington's son. And the thing is, he don't look like Denzel Washington. Denzel kids don't really look like him. They look a lot like his wife. And I watched John David Washington's interview and they asked him something about his parents. And as much as the world knows Denzel Washington as this huge, a top actor among the actors, top actor, right? John David was like, my mother is the star. My mother is a world renowned console pian- concert pianist. My mother is the star. But we don't know that lady. We know that lady as the lady to be on the carpet with Denzel Washington, who he said he will never leave. That's how we know that. That's all we know about that lady. We ain't know nothing about her being a concert pianist. You want to know why? Because usually concert pianists ain't on red car. Usually they don't got paparazzi following them. Usually they ain't making it into the tabloids. Usually they not on the Tonight Show. So it's kind of unfair to say that he is unworthy of any merit just because you are unaware of what he's done, right? Now, here's the thing. Also, I don't know. It's kind of ironic because as many people that did not like DDG dating Halle Bailey, those same people would have been outraged if Joe Buttons was dating Halle Bailey. <laughs> Maybe even more. Because it's like, well, what merit you got? And also you owe. And I don't, look, yo, I'm not saying he owe. I'm closer to his age than I think Halle, DDG's age. I'm sure of it. I think DDG, I found out he's like in his mid-20s. So, but I'm just saying the perception of the world, they, there would have been more outrage. So it's like, I think that it's fair to say, okay, now I'd like to see what this young man does. I'd I'd love to see a headline with this young man's name that isn't attached to Halle Bailey. I think that that's a reasonable ask. But to then go further and be like, because I like to judge you on your merit and I don't know you. Well, I don't know. Did you look him up? Did you do any research? Some people we going to know because they're going to be catapulted into fame. Into, su- into superstardom. Just like I said, if you ain't know, ha- y'all know before she was, before she was the black m- little mermaid, I did not know that they wasn't twins. Cause, cause I don't, I wasn't really, they, they, they a little bit, they a younger demographic than me. It was when I was doing my old podcast, Honesty with Z. And I was like, they, um, the, the twins, the Bailey twins and mad people listening was like, girl, they are not twins. And I was like, yeah, not identical. They was like, they are not twins. One is a year and some change older than the other. <laughs> so it wasn't for me to even talk about them as much as I was a huge fan of Beyonce. And so I, it was her becoming the black mermaid. It was her becoming a little mermaid. They put her on the tip of every person's tongue. I had to see what little girl are they mad at? What little black girl are they mad at? And for what? Oh, oh, that's the little girl. Oh, that's the little girl that was on YouTube. Of course, DDG got wind of um, Joe Button's comments. And I don't know if he started a podcast because of it (laughs) or if it was just perfect timing, but he responded. Um. He definitely responded. And let's hear what he has to say. I ain't coming on here to say I'm going to whoop your ass. I will. Don't get it fucked. But I ain't coming on here to say that. 
You feel me? Yeah. I'm coming to her to say you talking to a real social media legend. You talking to a real like. <sighs> You know, I, I I decided to stay tuned to this interview, but if if you start if you start off with like brute ego, I already I have a hard time trusting what you're saying. If you start off, I ain't saying I ain't coming here to beat your ass, although I will beat your ass. You you already lose me. You already lose me because I'm like okay, I'm not I'm at, I'm not this person is not re, they're not they're they're not in, they're not reasonably speaking. Because there's no reason for DDG to physically fight Joe Buttons. Somebody that put their family in position to win. Somebody that motivated your kids, motivated your, your family, your nieces and nephews. Somebody that entertained them for years. Somebody that really put a stamp on in music. I got way more accolades than you in music. And I'm doing way better than you in life in general. And I'm 26, and you're 44. 44. I looked up. I ain't gonna Man. lie. I ain't gonna 44. lie. 44. I didn't even know who. I didn't know. <laughs> Why the sidekick? Man, 44. First of all, we gotta let go of ageism. We gotta let go of ageism. Cause I think the thing that I also took for granted when I was in my 20s was how much of a blessing it is to get older and older and older. Um, because. So many people have not lived to see their 44th birthday. Me included. I don't know what that birthday looked like. But so many people have not. I know what my 26th birthday looked like, though. So many people have not lived to see their 44th birthday. And so we have to stop talking about age like it's, um, like it's some sort of negative. It's not. It just never is. It's just, it's just the people who be on, on earth... I, re I remember this girl. I think I've, t I've told this story so much. I, there was this girl, and she still don't like me. Maybe she listening. She still don't like me. I have no idea why she don't like me. But I don't have time to tell a full-out story. But one day, we, at some point in our lives, we gained a mutual friend. And we was at a fight party at a huge celebrity's house. Whoever you're thinking of, think even bigger. I'm talking about huge celebrity. And I don't know if my, our mutual friend didn't know that there was like kind of beef, one-sided beef. Although the thing about it, I, I said this when I was talking about Megan Thee Stallion. Like if you, if you don't really understand why, I got to take that back. Because when it's one-sided, you don't got, you ain't got every, every action has an equal and opposite reaction and yeah a lot of times if somebody beefing with you whether you know why or not you gonna defend yourself from the beef it's like oh you don't like me well I don't really trust people that don't like me so guards up walls up right and you I don't know if he didn't wasn't aware but he was like oh, okay y'all two could sit right here and I said because I just y'all know me I'll be Sometimes I'll be saying it. I, I don't know. I ain't really about to be in too many awkward situations without speaking on it, without addressing the elephant in the room. So I was like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not about to sit here, but I'm not about to sit next to her the whole fight because I know she don't like me. And she was like, excuse me? And I said, yeah, you don't like me. I don't know why you don't like me. You can tell me why you don't like me, but I know you don't like me. And you know what? Th this is how I knew she was a liar. You know what her response said was? And at the time, I know I'm like maybe like probably like 10 years, 10 maybe more than that, younger than her. Um, at the time, I was like in my, I still had a shaved head, so maybe I'm 30 or something. Um, she was like, uh, maybe even, 20, I don't know. But she said, <laughs> she said, I'm damn near 40. Like, wh why wouldn't I like you? And I said, girl, what you think age got to do? I said, did you not see that Martin episode? Young fool, old fools used to be young fools. It's, it's old people to this people that's going to their grave at 92 years old, not liking somebody. What do age got to do with it? Now, if she would have said, I am way too mature to dislike somebody, I am way too. If she would have said, I don't even know you, how can I do? Like, if she would have said a bunch of things, I would have been like, oh, okay, well, I don't know. It don't it don't feel right. Can we, let's, let's talk this out. But for her to be like, I'm, I'm damn near 40 years old. I... <laughs> well, now I know you don't like me. And you think I'm stupid. And so now we got beef. <laughs> and 
And I said, oh, okay, well, let me tell you why. And then I went into telling her why, because it's like, I'm not going to pretend. As much as you're going to pretend, I went into pretending. I'm like, you know, you had a close friend, and I was dating that close friend, and I don't know if, I don't know what he told you about me. I don't know, da 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 But I feel like every interaction has been really, really n- nasty, and you, I just, your energy ain't right, you know, around me and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, yeah, none of that is true for me. I said, okay, you sure? She was like, yeah. I said, well, then I apologize. I apologize and I wish you well. You think that girl like me? That girl dies inside every time she sees me. She dies inside so much you could see her die inside. She dies inside. That woman, because <laughs> she's probably 50 now. Uh, that woman, and here's the thing, you guys. She's an attractive woman. She's like, oh, but dies inside. Dies inside every time she sees me. Anyway, um, so for them to be like, he, bruh, he 44. You're going to you, you, be 44 one day and probably still engaging in these same conversations. Like, that's not, that's not a hit. I like, I like the DDG started off with like, I am, your kids probably watch me, your kid, I probably influenced your nieces, your nephews, your kid, like, you don't understand, I am a, so this is what I've done on social media, like, this is what, it's like, yeah, if he don't know your merit, and he don't know your accolades, tell him, if you gonna respond back to him, just tell him. Who Joe Budden was until he sat next to academics. I don't know what label he was signed to, they had... He said, I didn't know who Joe Buttons was until he sat next to academics. That's basically what Joe Buttons is saying about you. <laughs> I didn't know who DDG was until his name was next to Halle Bailey. <laughs> Y'all saying the same thing. That bitch on the radio, but you know where they had it at the most? Where? The trampoline parks. That's the only place I know you from. Because <laughs> I used to go to the trampoline parks and they used to play Pump It Up. Oh my God! And he got, he got a cheerleader song. Cheerleader he song. He made a cheerleader <laughs> song. Pump, now, like, come on, pump, like, pump it up. Like, pump, you be dancing to that pump, motherfucker. Pump with who is the hype man? I know y'all probably know who the hype man is. I have, you know, sorry to this man. I don't know who this man is. Sorry to this man. But, but let me tell you where. Let me tell you where he's succeeding at. He is succeeding at the ad libs. He. He is every rapper in the 90s with a hype man backstage with on stage with them behind them giving you that last sentence of every line. He is succeeding. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> went gold in 20 years. 20 years? It took you 20 years to go gold? I got three gold records and one double platinum. Mm. And okay. I ain't, I am no. Okay. So he's saying, Joe Buttons, you only got one gold record. And that was 20 years ago. And I have three gold records and one platinum. I don't know if this, remember last week we did the fact checking episode. I don't know what about DDG makes me feel like I got to say this. <laughs> it's because I don't know him. And him and his hype man, I don't quite trust. And he started with the, I, I, I will beat your ass. So I don't quite trust him. I don't trust his ability to be completely honest with himself. So that's probably why I'm saying this. I will be honest. Um, but listen, let me be careful because he'd be like the girl with the little baby fro. And bruh, I found out that bruh, she, she could never touch my girl, bruh. With, she could never touch my baby mom's, bruh. Because <laughs> you know the young kids, they will try to destroy you. And the first thing they're going to say is your age. When this man is old enough to be my uncle, my pops. Like this is an old it man. OG. He OG. He's a, he's a, he ain't OG to me. You ain't get no respect for me. I ain't gonna lie. I looked up his accolades and it made me feel way better about myself. <laughs> Cause a lot of people be on me crazy, but these ain't even got plaques. Like this man has one plaque in his home, mm. one plaque. That and that's a positive thing to come from it, right? Like, oh, you tried to play me. You basically kind of dissed me on your platform, and so I did what you didn't do for me. I looked you up. And bro, I actually feel better about my life having looked you up because at my at my 26 years on this earth, I've seemed to have uh, accomplished more than you. So I feel better. I think that's like I'd have just ended the and I'd have just ended the topic there if I was DDG. Like, thank you, bro. Thank you, because you put things into perspective for me. I was like, who, 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 what, what, who old enough to who, who. Well, Uncle, Uncle, uh, what's his name? Joe, but Uncle, who's Uncle Joe talking about? Oh, he's talking about me? 
Let me look and see what Uncle Joe did to make him feel this way about me. Let me see what his merit is. Oh, my God. It seems like I have more merits than him. Well, I feel great. Let me call Hallie. That's the only one you got? The only one he got? He been waiting at the mailbox for 20 years to you know, get a I ain't gonna lie. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned my name. Because I'm about to... Uh, you don't know who you messing with. I'm Mr. Monetizer. All y'all old folks know who I am. And if you don't know who I am, do your professional... And do your research. Yeah, you Everyone, kept hearing your name. Everybody, you know want, yes, he knows all it takes is a, a, a few scrolls. I think he's talking to me too. He said, y'all old people do your professional research. And as I discussed this entire topic, although I feel like I have thoroughly discussed it um, and given a very objective, you know, talk on all of them, you know, I, I, I also did not look up DDG's merits. All it takes is a, a, a few scrolls and you'll know who I am. Quit acting like y'all don't know who I am. I have a lot of homosexual fans and bisexual fans, and I never want y'all to ever. <laughs> Whenever somebody say, I don't want y'all to ever feel like I'm homophobic, you about to say the most homophobic thing ever. I... You know, against y'all and I got, I have LGBTQ, that's how you say it. LGBTQ. It's a tongue twister. LGBTQ plus uh, friends. Like I like how the hype man stopped being hyped. He was like LGBTQ. LGBT. He was looking like, ain't you? Ain't, don't you finish the last word and letter on every one of my sentences? LGBT. He, hype man was like, I'll wait till you start you know, disparaging people based on their age. I, I'll get back with you when you start doing that again. <laughs> then he said it's a tongue twister. It's not. LGBTQ? It's actually the most not tongue uh, twister. It's the most not tongue twister. Yeah, LGBTQ. It's it's actually, there. there's there's such different sounds and consonants. It's actually LGBTQ. It's like, it's it's actually the, the most non-tongue twister. I say that with love, DDG. I have nothing against y'all whatsoever, but I didn't know this. I looked this up today. Joe Budden is bisexual. I swear, I looked it up. That's, hey, why, I'm like, that's why I'm like, bro, I don't know. And this is where we got to stop listening. At two minutes and 55 seconds, this is where we got to stop listening. As much as he gave that whole disclaimer, because what you never want to do is alienate a community. And everybody has known the backlash that you get when you alienate anybody in the LGBTQ, IA+. So he like, yo, I'm not, I'm not talking about y'all. I remember what happened with the baby. I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about him. He bisexual. Again. And... So, and I don't even know if that's true or not. And guess what? I don't care. Only way I'd care if Joe Buttons was bisexual is if he came out and was like disparaging bisexuals. Then it's like, well, hold on a second. Are you the pot calling the kettle? Right? Are you throwing stones in a glass house? But this is, this is the unfortunate and I'm gonna go back. I started. I started out with our Black American princess and, and having a cultural conversation. And I know that not all of my listeners and viewers are are Black and more specifically African American. But this is this is a worldwide uh, African diaspora thing, and not even it's a people of color thing. This, um, this. Like this, 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 like calling someone gay, we got to let that go. Devaluing, it doesn't happen to women. Devaluing a guy 
but publicly, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody like, okay, did, like I think last time somebody lost the sponsorship, a woman lost the sponsorship was like in the early nineties when Ellen, they canceled her show when she came out as gay. Right. And so y'all wondering in 2020 why she sometimes is a bitch. It's like, it, <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> somebody going to cut that up. One day I'm going to be on somebody else's platform. Like, I know what I'm talking about. And then they're going to cut to me saying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, what do him being bisexual on the queer spectrum, what do that have to do with anything? He goes on for, it's, it's something that we do culturally to disparage one another, especially black men, men of color, men of color, black men, Latin men, uh, brown men. I'm not sure about the, I'm not sure about the Asian community. I'm not sure. But to disparage, to, oh, it's like, wait, you you talking about merits and you you naming all the stuff you got, you talking about, but him being bisexual, that is not a diss. That's not a diss. When you, when you, when you say that someone being queer, when you try to use that as an insult, you have only insulted that community. As much as you are saying, I don't mean to insult y'all. I ain't trying to insult y'all. Yes, yes. A friend of mine, I can't tell you who it is because I told him not to repeat this publicly, but I was talking to a friend of mine and he was like, you know, Zainab, I'm not homophobic. I was like, of course you're not homophobic. He was like, but, you know, I don't really, I don't, you know, if I see like two men kissing in the street, like I don't really need to see that. I don't, that, I don't really need to see that. And I'm like, all right. And he was like, um, you know, it's the same. But, you know, if, if when I say that to people, they be like, oh, you're homophobic. And I'm like, no, I'm not homophobic. Like, it's the same way. Like, I don't want to see like no young guy kissing on no young girl. And I was like, wait, you talk about like pedophilia? He was like, yeah. I said, okay, well, don't say that publicly again. I said, I understand what you're trying to say, but don't say that. I said, don't get on no public pa platform and say that because what you are doing is you're equating homosexuality or bisexuality or, or anything that is not straight. You are associating that with a crime. Pedophilia is a crime. It's a crime. And so you associating that with a crime. You're making, you're equating that with a crime. Don't do that. So with them, it's like, yeah, say all, say all that you want about Joe Budden. You could say he ain't attractive. You could say that he ain't had a, uh, uh, he only had a gold record. That was, so you could say all of those things. You could say, keep my name out your mouth. But the moment you bring up his bisexuality, true or not, you have not offended him. You have offended the entire queer community. And I hope that I'm using the right term when I say queer. You know, the terms be changing so much. I just want to be correct. DDG goes on. I'm not going to play it, but he goes on to talk about uh, the allegations against Joe Buttons, like um, uh, harming a pregnant love interest to, to sort of basically inducing like a like basically like a, inducing a miscarriage or something. Right. Here's what I don't like about that. I don't like that the only time men speak up against other men when they're clearly committing crimes is when you are in opposition of that man. If you are not always screaming domestic violence, domestic violence, domestic violence, it's the same way I love Kendrick Lamar. I love Kendrick Lamar. But of course, any, any intelligent and reasonable person is like, okay, you have all of these accusations against Drake, but we know what Dr. Dre did and he's on stage with you. So your, your, um, attempt to cap for women, black women in particular, is kind of feeling very hypocritical because we know of a black woman whose ass he beat severely. So, so are you against domestic violence or not? And I'm not saying people can't change. I'm not saying that I haven't listened to a Dr. Dre song. I'm not, I'm not at all saying that, but I'm just saying. Either you always against it or you not. And so 
it you you know like they making jokes about it like he was stomping on her stomach while pump it up was on Joe Button's song and then he clears it up he's like I'm 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 only thing I'm joking about is the song playing in the background but I'm but I'm serious it's like oh that's that's not good that's not good and I'm sure there are many people that you are around that engage in those toxic masculine behaviors that devalue women who you no longer have use for and so don't try to bring that up because now now I'm just looking at you sideways and I have you know what's crazy I had this whole conversation and I I have no fanship I have no interest in anyone I'm talking about except Halle Bailey I am truly a fan of that young woman I believe she's beautiful every time I see her I'm I admire I admire her other than that, I don't feel no way about Joe Buttons or DDG more or less than anybody else. I feel like they both made some points, but then the rest of it was garbage. And this is why I don't be liking to talk about celebrity relationships because This is a long episode, you guys. Oh, my God. Okay, Ask Z. Before we get out of here, Ask Z. Y'all know I'll be ready when a long, when it's a long episode. I'll be like, okay, we're not about to do an Ask Z. I ain't going to do that to y'all because we back in the office. We back in the office. Um, okay, so our Ask Z comes from... Our Ask Z comes from... Noah Darling, that's what I'm naming this person. I'm naming them Noah Darling. Um, Hello, Zainab. I'm coming to you with an Ask Z that happened to me yesterday. My mother-in-law has developed Alzheimer's disease for the past two years. It's been really hard for my father-in-law to take, it's been really hard for my father-in-law to take care of her as her condition is getting worse. So every once in a while, my husband and I try to, visit them and do some try to visit them and do some activities with her on Sunday I decided to go visit them alone because my husband was traveling for work I decided to take her out to eat and do some shopping we drove to the shopping mall as we were walking towards the entrance in the parking lot a car came behind us and honked at us to move they honked and asked us to move it kind of made me jump a little bit because I absolutely didn't hear her coming. I looked at her with an annoyed face, letting her know that it was unnecessary and proceeded to walk us to the side so that she could pass. Instead of driving away, since she was clearly in a hurry, she yelled at me that I could fix my face. <sighs> Ain't nothing worse. Somebody do something and you and you make a face at them because you don't like it. And they like, and fix your face. It's like that last word thing. Like they got to have the last word. She yelled at me that I could fix my face. I couldn't keep it together anymore, and I told her in a not-so-polite way that she didn't have to honk at us like that and that clearly she saw that I was with an elderly woman and she scared us. I personally never honk unless it's necessary, so I was really annoyed. Then she proceeded, you never honk? Dang, never unless it's necessary. Okay. Like, what's necessary? Like, you trying to avoid, like, a collision or something like that, or somebody ain't paying attention, like, they walk in, or somebody merging the names. But, like, you, like, you only honk when it's for the, the safety of, of everybody on the road. Okay, girl, we appreciate you. Then she proceeded to argue. I personally never honk unless it's necessary, so I was really annoyed. Then she proceeded to argue with me some more, saying she didn't understand why I was pissed off, and I told her to just go. And I felt bad afterwards because it was the first time my mother-in-law was seeing me so fired up. When a person has dementia or Alzheimer's, it's important to reduce all stressors or unnecessary anxiety since they're already dealing with so much. Was I unreasonable to have argued with that lady since we were in the wrong since we were in the wrong for not walking on the right side, maybe I should have just been the bigger person. So let me just tell you what, let me tell you why comedians are terrible. Cause I'm going to say it and I apologize and everything. Now I'm sounding like DDG. I don't want to offend you, but I'm about to say something that could be very offensive. This is the comedian brain. When you said, when a person, when you said I felt bad afterwards because the first time my mother-in-law saw you getting fired up, the fact that she got Alzheimer's and dementia, my comedian brain said, girl, she probably won't even remember. 
I'm so sorry. Sometimes for a comedian, when the joke is right there, we just got to say it to get it out. It's almost like a sneeze or like a, or like gas. Like if we don't get it out, it's, it's like we're going to get a headache or a stomach ache. So I apologize. I am so sorry. But that is what crossed my mind when you wrote that. I said, girl, she, what? She, she might not remember. And look at me repeating it. Oh, my God. Shame. I'm so sorry, Nola, darling. I'm so sorry. Were you unreasonable to argue with this lady? Hmm. Yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. If you knew you was in the wrong, as shocking as it was, and she could have handled it better too. Um... You assume that she saw you were with an elderly, but I don't know how, like, uh, obviously elderly your mother-in-law looks, but sometimes we assume that people in the world have the same information that we have. She might have not even zoomed into your mom like that, your mother-in-law like that. She might have just saw two bodies. Depending on what this woman's day was, she might have just saw two bodies hindering her from going when she felt like she had the right to go. Um... You also don't like honking. Um, and the fact that she she kind of like, um, she egged you on. You know what I'm saying? She got you. You know how it's that thing where it's like, dang, and you know when the person, she got you. It's like, yeah, the honk, you understood. Like, okay, damn, I, that, that startled me. And like, damn, can't you see I'm with like an older person? So forgive us if we were in some way, shape, or form hindering the road or hindering the 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 the, the driving lane. You know, like, I, but but like, have a little bit of compassion, right? Like, I'm clearly with an older person. Have a little, and maybe we made a mistake. Like, we're human beings. Like, have a little bit of compassion, right? And then when you pass me. Because it seemed like you were in a rush because you were honking at us. It seemed like you were in a rush, but you got the time to, to say something out the side of your mouth. So now I'm annoyed. She said something out the side of her mouth. And you ain't got to make your face like that. Or what did, what did she say? Um, uh, oh, she told you to fix your face. It's already, let me tell you, let me, let me tell you the number one thing you could be sure of. Anytime you, unless it's a child, anytime you ever tell a grown person to fix their face, what you can guarantee they're not going to do is fix their face. You've only made the face worse. That's just, a, so people know that. They know that. So she, she agitated you um, and you were already aggravated um, and she just poked and she got you. And you, you met her energy where she was at. She was unreasonable. And so you were unreasonable. And so, yeah, you were, but that's okay. That's okay. And, and every, not in every moment, especially when it happens as fast as I imagine this happened. And also considering what you're protecting, which is, it's like not, I'm assuming that it's not just that you don't like when somebody honks, but, and it's not just that you were startled, but cause I believe. And you could tell me if I'm wrong, Nola, darling. I believe that if you were by yourself, it probably went, you would have probably just like hurried up, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? But hurried up. But your protection for your, um, for your elder mother-in-law who is also suffering from a, like an awful disease, an awful illness, so I can imagine that all of, if I take all of that into consideration, the fact that you had to take a moment and flip on somebody, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'm happy that y'all both was only a little bit unreasonable and it stopped there. You know, we see online all the time. It's like, oh, he cut me off in traffic and now two people dead, right? We, we, that's the only reason why when we can, when we can, we if we could just activate that extra second, if we could just activate that extra second, like, is this even worth it? She's already, my mother-in-law is already startled by the honk. I'm not even going to make it worse with her watching me flip on this lady who I don't know, I ain't never going to see again probably. Sometimes we can't always, sometimes we don't always have that second. But I think, I think, you being in this situation and then coming out of it, like, 
dang, was I, I should have, I could have done this. I could have made a different choice. I think that already puts you on a path that if and when this happens the next time, something like this happens the next time, you'll probably be more reasonable. You probably be more reasonable. So yeah, it's like, yeah, we, we all, we all strive to be the bigger person, but we, we, we don't always meet our goals every single time. And that's, and that's okay. The same way you were wondering where that driver's compassion was. I have the same compassion reading this letter. Like, and I, and I hope that you have the compassion for yourself. Like, all right, I could have been a bigger person, but that, that incident is done and over with. So I'm going to forgive myself. I'm going to be more mindful I'm going to be more mindful and hopefully if some, if I'm ever in a situation like this again, I'll be able to be the bigger person. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for writing in. Um, and thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson. Um, I'll see you guys same time, same place next week. Until then, be reasonable. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.